Here's the thing. In the previous video, as part of my Office Automation series, I showed you how to get Home Assistant going and how to connect Zigbee lights, such as the ones from Philips and Ikea, to Home Assistant and turn them on and off with a click of a button. But what if you could turn it all on and off without even pressing a single button? So that's exactly what I'm going to be showing you in this video. I will show how I automated my office and how I made everything in the office turn on and off automatically as I enter the office or leave it. Let's get started. For this part of the project, we will need the following components. A Philips Hue motion sensor, a smart socket by Tuya, which are made by different companies, but this one is made by Nedis, and a Xiaomi door and window sensor. The first component we will install is the motion tracker. Take a pin into the setup hole and hold it for seven seconds. And here we see the LED here starts blinking. After that happens, we go to the ZHA configuration and add the device. And shortly, the device is found. Let's rename it as well. And mark that it's gonna be in the hole. The Philips Hue motion sensor has a built-in temperature and illuminance sensor. So we can use that to measure the temperature in the room. I prefer for motion sensors to remove the word motion. Just because then it makes more sense. Something like whole illumination, whole temperature. It makes it easier to then use it in different places in our automations. Okay. And that's the one we're actually after. Whole occupancy which basically will be triggered when there is somebody inside the hall. Okay. Hall occupancy. Next, we reset the door sensor and we basically do it the same way by inserting the pin into the reset button. Once it was reset, when we press search again, we should be able to find the door sensor. Once the sensor appears here, we can rename it again. Hole, door, and then that we can rename also in to door. Okay. Cool. The trick to know if somebody entered the room or exited is if this, the door has been closed and after that there's no motion. That means somebody has left. If the door has closed and there is motion, that means somebody has entered the, the room. Okay, now that we have all the sensors set up, let's build the automation that will happen when the when we enter and leave the office. First, we're gonna create a toggle helper. A helper is basically an element in the user interface or actually within Home Assistant itself that can help us remember state. In this case, we'll remember is the office on or off. So we go to configuration, helpers and create a toggle helper. We'll call it office and give it a power icon. Now, you will see that this toggle appears also in the user interface itself, and we can use it in our automation. So let's uh, create the automation. We go to configuration, automations, add automation. The first automation we will make is what happens when somebody enters the office. So, office turn on. And that will happen when the office toggle is switched on switches to on what happens is that we want all the lights to turn on light turn on and then we can define entity we can write here all and that will be accepted as well 
you don't have to pick all the entities in here. Save. Okay. Next is the opposite of that. So we can actually take one, that one, and duplicate it. We duplicate automation, call it turn off. We say when it switches to off. And here we change the service to turn off. And again, pick all the lights. But now we need something to actually toggle, well, the toggle on and off. Let's create another automation and we call it office enter. And basically what that will be, uh, what that automation will monitor is just movement on the motion sensor. So motion became occupied, which means somebody has occupied the hall. We want that to be active only if the office is currently off. Basically, we don't want if somebody is already in the office and he turned off some of the lights manually and then you walk into the hall, suddenly all the lights turn on again automatically because we toggle the switches again. Boolean turn on and we just choose the boolean we just created. So the, turn, the entering part is easy. Now, what do we do with the exit part? Add automation. Office. Leave. Now, leaving is quite a bit more complicated because first, we want to see that the door has been closed. But after the door has been closed, we want to see that the hole has been cleared. And so we look at motion and occupancy become not occupied, which means mm, there's nobody else in the office. However, we don't want that whole automation to work if the office hasn't been on for more than at least 10 seconds. And let me just make that entity office and 10 seconds. Now, why do we need this condition? Because basically imagine the following scenario. You enter the office, close the door behind you, the motion sensor detects motion, then you go to the next room, and basically the room became unoccupied, which basically means you have just left. However, if the office had been on for less than 10 seconds, that means that you've been exiting because the office was already on. And to prevent that also from Triggering after the 10 seconds, we add another 10 seconds timeout here, which means that it will wait for the, the hole to become unoccupied for 10 seconds. And after that, we will actually enable the office. So call service, boolean turn, sorry, disable the office, and we choose the office. So let's go over that again, because that one is a bit more complicated. The trigger is that the door has been closed. So the moment the door has been closed, this automation starts working. The first thing it does, it checks, have the office been on for more than 10 seconds before the door was closed? If it was, awesome. Now let's wait for 10 more seconds for the hall to become not occupied. Once the hall becomes not occupied, which means the office has been on for more than 10 seconds, and you have just left the hall and closed the entrance door, then let's turn off the office. The next component is the smart socket that will allow us to connect the heater and turn it on and off when I enter and leave the office. The cool thing about that is that it doesn't work just with an electric heater like here. It can use, be used with a space heater. It can actually be used with a fan as well. Well, basically with anything that is turned on and off with electricity. This smart socket is actually made by a company called Nedis, but Nedis has actually a, a white label of Tuya. Tuya are manufacturing the brains of, I'd say the most uh, different smart home uh, connectors, plugs, lights, and so on. So if the smart plug you bought is not made by a recognizable brand, there's a high chance it's made by Tuya. The, the few different ways to control Tuya uh, devices, one is by using the Tuya app and basically using the whole Tuya uh, cloud. The other way to use Tuya devices is by 
connecting to them directly with Wi-Fi, but for that we need the local key embedded into the device. It's a little bit tricky to get the key, but it's not too complicated. After you sign up to the app and add the smart plug to the application, you go to iot.turia.com and create an account. I already have an account, so I will just log in with it. Here you go to cloud and create cloud project. Call it smart home. For industry, you can also choose smart home. Development method, smart home. Data center, whatever data center you bought the device from. So our case would be Europe and create. Here the important thing is to add device status and authorize. Once you're inside the project, you go to devices and link to your app account. Add app account, go inside the app to me, scan and scan that QR code. Confirm login and you have the app connected. Once the app is connected, you should be able to see in all devices, all the devices you have defined. Next, we need to set it up inside Home Assistant. And the way we do it, first, we need to install a custom plugin or rather custom integration inside Home Assistant for local Tuya. So to be able to install local integrations, we need to have either access to the file system of Home Assistant. The easiest way to do it is you go to Supervisor, Add-ons, find Samba, and install that. Once Samba is installed, you go to Configuration and give it a password here. Of course, don't set that password. Think of your own. Once you have the password set, go back here and start Samba. Once Samba has started, you should be able to see the Samba drive as a network drive in your file manager. So, File, Network, Home Assistant. Enter the password, username is Home Assistant, and connect. And now you see all the folders for configuration, media, and so on. Now we go and download local Tuya. <laughs> the latest release, open it up, go inside. Inside the Home Assistant network drive, we go to config and we move, basically copy the custom components into the configuration folder. That's it, configuration, and restart the server. Once the server is back up and running, configuration, integration, and we add an integration and find local Tuya. Local Tuya is gonna search for all the different Tuya plugs we have in the network. So submit, and what we see here is a device ID. Now we need to find what is the local key for that device ID. How do we do that? We go to the Tuya IoT platform, API Explorer, open general device management, get device information, and enter the device ID here. Here we will find the local key. Now we can test it here. Name will be the name of the integration. It doesn't really matter because we'll give the actual plug a different name. So here it's gonna be office, or actually Tuya. Choose what kind of a device it is. So in this case, this is a switch. That doesn't matter and we say call Submit. Submit. We choose it's in the hall. Okay. So now we have the temperature and we have the two heaters. Let's tie the two heaters to the temperature. We we'll create an automation. Office regulate temperature. Can be triggered by either a change in temperature or by a change in the office conditions. If the office became on or off, what we do is we choose conditions and if the temperature is below 20 and the office is on, then turn on both heaters. Otherwise, turn them off. You 
And that's the way it looks. So when either the whole temperature or the state of the office changes, check. If the whole temperature is below 20 and the office is on, switch on the heaters. Else, switch off the heaters. That's it. Now, as I enter my office, the lights turn on, including the ceiling lights, and uh, the heaters turn on if the temperature is below 20 degrees and stay on until it gets to 20 degrees. So, regulated automatically as well. And even the switches in the walls still work. So, great success. In my next video, I'm gonna show you how I automated an on ELSC sign for my Zoom calls. I promise you that is gonna be cool. So make sure to subscribe to see my next video. And if you like this video, please click like. If you didn't, please leave a comment and tell me what you didn't like. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it and I'll see you in the next one.